you here this morning are not blessed, but you are here to that to someone, whether you know that or not. And I guarantee there is somebody who you are one step ahead or one or two steps ahead in their walk with Christ, and they like to know you may not know that. And there's some people that you are the only Christian that they know. And so in a very so real a very way, real you are a spirit of that. So what I'm going to ask is ask all of the adult guys, just stand, stand up. up. Yeah, I'm not going to make you talk or sing or anything like that. Just stand up. We've got a little gifty for you. A little bit of gelato over hill gelato across the street. It's supposed to be 90 degrees today. So take your family over there. Have some gelato from Raviano Baptist Church family. Once they hand those out, God's bless you. Keep standing because I want to pray for you here in just a minute. Don't people be able to lay eyes on eyes and eyes and eyes pray for you and pray over your ads. 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 It's a big role that you serve in home, it's a big role that you serve in your children's lives. And one day you'll have kids, it's a big role you'll serve in their lives. Is that everybody? 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 All right. All right. Okay, would you okay, join me in a word of prayer this morning? Let's, let's, let's lift up these dads before the Lord. Father, we thank Father, you. We thank Father, you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the way you design the homes. And for this, for this incredible, incredible spiritual leadership role, the expectation that you have for dads, it's a huge job. Overwhelming job. Father, you've Father, called you us call men us to it, and, and Lord, we know that when you call us to a task, you will enable us to carry that task out. And so, Father, I pray for each of these men, those whom you've blessed to have physical children already, those that are serving as spiritual dads, those that are serving in both roles. Father, I pray you give wisdom, give them strength, give them courage to stand up and to be all that you need us to do. Father, would you Father, keep your hand of blessing on them, them as they interact with their families, their families, as they lead their families, as they model what godliness looks like. And Father, we just we just we just we just just an incredible moment of gratitude for the dads and what they do and what they do in our lives. Continue to bless these these great and Let's give them a round of thank you applause, guys. You may be seated. And I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Maybe the computer sound. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, if you have a Bible with you today, and I hope that you do, or you're using a Bible app, new version, or another one, take it out. Turn with me to First Kings chapter two. Now I know, I know, I know. You've been in church on Father's Day before. That's not the usual place we go on Father's Day. First Kings for a Father's Day message. Ephesians six. Yeah, 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 bring up your children and training and instruction of the Lord. Yeah, usually we'll go there on Father's Day. Proverbs 22, maybe train up a child in the way he should go. We might go there. Acts 13, looking at David, the man after God's heart. First Kings 2, I know it's a bit of an unusual place for a Father's Day. But here's what's happened in the second chapter of First Kings. King David is about to die. And well, what and we, we see what there in 1 Kings, Kings 2 is the, is the last, last conversation, conversation he's having he's with his son with Solomon. Solomon. Solomon's getting ready to succeed him as king. And, and here's the last the conversation, conversation that the two of them have. Now you know, when you somebody, know, when somebody, when somebody, when somebody, somebody knows the last words they're going to say, Maybe they know Maybe they're getting ready to pass on from this life into the next, or they're, or they're moving to a next place, and you and CS out of here, you'll have opportunity to interact for the last time with people who have been a big part of your life for you. And when you and speak when you those speak last, 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 that's not a time to waste time. time. You don't talk you about don't talk trivial stuff. stuff. I mean, those I mean, are those moments, are moments you, talk you talk about what's about most, most important. important. Maybe, you Maybe you talk about, talk about, about those, things about those things, things that you, you should have said, said sooner, sooner, but you always say, like, I'll get to that. There'll be, there'll, there'll be time, time, or now's right not now the best not opportune, opportune moment. moment. You, you say those things, things that maybe you should have said sooner, said sooner, but now you finally, finally just finally come out and say things. You say those you say things, those things, things and you want to make sure you leave a last impression. And that's what we that's see what we here see in David's, David's David final conversation with Solomon. We have the privilege of listening in. It's eavesdropping in that room a little bit. 
and listening in on this conversation, learning from this man after God's heart. And what is it that he tells his son Solomon as he's getting ready to prepare him for this next next step in his life? So you follow along with me, with me. First Kings chapter two, verses one through four. So as, da as David's time to die, to die, to die he charged Solomon, 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 saying, I'm saying, going I'm the way of all the earth. Be strong, Be strong therefore. therefore. Show yourself a man. Keep, keep the charge of the Lord your God, God to walk in his ways, 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 to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and testimonies, according to what is written in the law of the that you may succeed in all that you do wherever you turn. So that the Lord so that the may carry Lord out his promise which he spoke, spoke concerning me. Saying, if your, saying sons, if your are sons are careful of their way, to walk, walk before me in truth with all their heart, and with all their soul, you shall, shall not lash me on the throne of Israel. And Father, we thank you for these words. And we thank you that you inspired the writers of Scripture to put these there. That we could learn from them. That you could challenge our hearts today. Challenge your dads that are here today. So, Father, so as we Father, tap, we'll into, tap this into this wisdom, wisdom of wisdom, wisdom, the man after man your own heart, 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 as he instructs his son, son in this son final conversation, 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 Father, we just Father, pray we just that you'd open our hearts and our Help us to hear what you have for us And help us to leave out of your doers, change from an encounter with you today. Father, would you just bless these next few moments we have together? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And here's the big idea I think that the main thought, thought of these first, 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 first few verses of 1 Kings chapter 2, two, 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 two that in the day last, last words to Solomon, 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 those provide us with some solid dad advice. I hope you had a good dad And if you did not, I'm sorry that you didn't. I hope you did. A guy that you could look to and just get solid advice from. You go to him, you didn't know what to do, right? Dads are fixers, right? We always have an answer. Great it may not be the one you want to hear, but we always have a solution, always have an answer. And that's the one that typically you go to when you kind of, I don't know what else to do here, Dad, can you give me some advice? And what we see here in Solomon, or David's last words to Solomon, are just some solid Dad advice. Kids, here are your three words this morning. I like to pull out the key words and this is your first time with us so that the, the kids have something you can write down. Kids write these words down and then as I say them throughout the course of the message, just make a little hash mark, a little notch next to them. Gives you something to talk about after the service with your family. The key words for the kids invest, success, and legacy. David, David was a man, was a man of great achievement. And, and even if you just spent some time in children's Sunday school growing up, you've heard, you heard, 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 heard the story of David and Goliath. David, 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 David was a man who really achieved some amazing things in his life. There's that, there's that account that when he's returning from battle, the people are lined up on the streets and they're shouting and they're just ecstatic and they're shouting, Saul killed his thousands. Now Saul was a great warrior in his own world. Saul killed his thousands, but David is, is 10,000. David really accomplished some amazing things in his life. But he was also a man of great faith. And his failures were almost as epic, almost as well known as his, as his successes. And one of the places that David really often was a failure was at home, in his role as father. One of his one sons, of his sons Absalom, Absalom, tries to tries kill him to kill so that he can so take, take over. Throw. David, David, David runs the run at one point in time from his own, from his own son, son. Happy Father's, Father's Day, Father's Day, Dad. Dad. And one of his other one of his sons, sons, read this in, 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 in First Kings, Kings chapter 1. One, one, one of his other sons, Adonijah. He's, he's, he's scheming, scheming trying to make trying a run for the throne, even his dad is on his deathbed. David wasn't always the model dad to look at. You might say, well, you gosh, say, well, gosh Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, what are we looking at him, him, him for this morning? morning? Why are we Why looking to this guy, guy who was a great military leader, a great king, 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 but, king but often was just a was just colossal, colossal failure, failure as, a as a dad? Why are we Why looking, are we to, looking him to him for dad, dad advice? advice? See, David See, didn't David get it always right. Right. And often, and when often you read the accounts of David and his family, David and his son, and it reads like a bad soap opera. He didn't often, he didn't often get it right, get it but here, right, he, here does. he does. 
And in these, and in last, these last, last, few, this last this conversation, conversation, these last, these last few words, few words he, shares, he shares, there are some, there are important, some important lessons, lessons for, us for us as dads. And that's what I want us to pick, pick out, of out of that. I don't want us to look at the ties where David failed. He got it right, right, right here. Let's pick the important lessons out from that. From that. The important, the important lesson, lesson is, is this. Is this it's never, it's too never too late. Dads, dads it is never, it is never too, too late, late to engage, to engage in, your in your kids' lives, lives spiritually. And maybe your kids maybe are a little, little bit older and you haven't. You've kind of put, kind that, of put that off. It'll be a more opportune time. time. It'll be easier maybe, easier maybe as they get older. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I just need I just to spend a little more time and get a little more prepared. There's been a lot of years that have passed. A lot of water so to say, under, say, under the, bridge. the bridge. And you might say, well, gosh, maybe, gosh, maybe it's, too it's too late for me to engage right now. It is never too late. Look again at verse 1. As David's time to die drew near, he charged Solomon, his son. Now, we don't know how old Solomon was at this point. Commentators, Commentators are speculating. The best we can do is speculate how old Solomon was when he took the throne, took the throne somewhere, somewhere in his early, early to mid-20s. To mid and so David, and so David waited, waited a long, a long time, time before he had this kind of conversation, kind of conversation with, Solomon. with Solomon. But I think that's, but I think that's, maybe that's, maybe that's telling, telling to us. He waited, he waited maybe all, too, long, too long, certainly. certainly. But, he, but, but he, it was never, it was too, never late. too late. He's finally, he finally engages. And here's the first, here's the first, first bit of dad, dad advice, I think, from this, from this event. event. Don't wait till the, the, the end, dad says. Don't wait till it's your deathbed conversation with your children to finally invest. Don't wait that long. But don't, but think, don't you think, think you can't, can't make a difference where you are, where you are right, right now. now. No matter where, no matter you, where are you are in your spiritual, spiritual walk, don't walk, think you, don't can't, think make you can't make a difference. No matter what no matter you have, what you have or have not, not done, how you have, have, have not have engaged, not engaged in, your in your kids' lives, don't, don't think, think you can't make a make difference right, right now. now. We talked just, we talked a, moment just a moment ago about what a train wreck David's other sons were. And he waits, and he a, waits long, a long time, and, time and, and, Solomon and Solomon at least starts, starts off his reign, his reign on a godly, on a godly footing. footing. If you know anything, you know anything about Solomon's, Solomon's reign, he starts, he starts off following after, after the Lord, and he loses, loses focus, focus somewhere, somewhere along, along the way. way. But he at least starts off on a godly, on a godly footing. footing. And I can't help, I can't but, help but to think, think that Solomon would have been every much a disaster as his brothers had David not weighed in. Without, without David's, David's guidance, guidance here, here. Without, without David, David investing, investing in his life, his life spiritually, spiritually, I can't, I can't help, but help but imagine what a train, what a train wreck, wreck Solomon, Solomon would have been to. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 4, verse 9, verse 9 says, says this. Only be, Only be careful. Watch yourself closely so that you don't forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Listen, you've seen God at work, Dad. You've, you've prayed and seen things happen. You've read about his promises and you've seen them come true. Don't forget that stuff. And then he goes on. Don't just keep them to yourself. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Share that godly wisdom with them. And don't think it's, it's beyond hope. Don't think it's not time. You can't do it now. And David's advice really starts there in verse 2. He said, I'm going all the way of the earth. Be strong, therefore. Show yourself a man. So what's the, the beginning of David's dad advice to Solomon? Buck up, boy. Be a man. That's his advice to Solomon. David is what we would call a man's man. You know, what would you expect that advice? Buck up, be strong, be a man. What would you expect that look like from a guy like David? And we talked about David and Goliath. Everybody, most people know that story. Before that event happened, David tells the king, he tells Saul, as he's talking to him, he said, you know, listen, sometime before then, while David was a child, he said a, a lion came to steal a sheep out of the flock. And I, and I went after the lion, and we, when he raised up against me, I grabbed him by the mane. I beat him to death with my bare hands. As a child, David was a man's man. What would you expect that advice looks like? Be a man from a guy like David. His advice his vice goes on in verses 3 and 4. We'll look at it here in a minute, but here, here's in a nutshell what it is. Son, the greatest achievement in your life will be to follow earnestly after the Lord. David could have talked about a lot of things. 
a lot of achievements that he had. He was getting ready, to, he was preparing Solomon to get ready to take the throne. He could have talked about job advice. Son, I've been king for a lot of years now. Let me tell you how to be successful in your job. Let me tell you how to do the job as king. He could have talked about job advice. He was this legendary general. Let me give you some sound military strategy, a little PME before we pass on the torch. He could have done that. But his advice is this. The greatest achievement you're going to have in your life is to follow earnestly after the Lord. To invest yourself in Him and following Him. It sounds a lot like what God told Joshua when he took command. A couple of weeks ago, Reuben Serta, one of our deacons, was up here and he preached a sermon called, What Now? When we face those crossroads in life and we have to decide, what am I going to do now? Am I going to follow the path of least resistance or am I going to follow after the Lord? When those moments come, Joshua was at one of those moments. Solomon was at one of those moments. This is what God told Joshua when he was at that moment. Be strong, be very courageous. Be careful to do all of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Listen, the Bible never promises that following Christ is going to be easy. It never promises that following Christ is going to be trouble-free, and we shouldn't expect it to be. We are now enemies. As soon as you place your faith and trust in Christ, you are enemies living in enemy territory. We shouldn't expect that's going to be an easy road. And your kids are going to be tempted a lot, just as you were. They're going to be tempted to follow the path of least resistance, to go along, to get along. What's the easiest thing to do? They're going to be faced with those temptations. And are you preparing them to lean into the Lord in those moments, not to reach down within themselves and be strong, son, be, be strong, my little girl. Be your best you. Are you preparing them not to reach down within themselves, but to lean into the Lord in those moments? Find their strength in Him. Find their courage in Him. Strength and courage, they don't even know where it comes from. Are you preparing them for that? Dads, learn from David here. Even if you've let a lot of years pass, You've let a lot of time go, maybe more time than you should have. Learn from David here. Engage spiritually with them now. It's not too late. You may say, well, I don't know all the answers. Well, find them. Tell them that. Listen, I don't know the answer. Your kids are going to have tough questions, I guarantee it. I've interacted with a lot of them, and they, they come up with them stump-the-chump kind of questions. They're going to have some tough questions. If you don't know the answer, tell them. I don't know, but then you know what? Let's go open up the Word of God and find it together. Engage with them. Learn from David here. It's never too late. Second thing is this. When you engage, focus on what really matters. Focus on what is most important. Now, we read those verses just a moment ago, and, and David lays out for Solomon the formula for success, so to speak. We all want our kids to succeed in life. We don't want to set our kids up to fail. We all want to see them succeed. But as you're preparing your children to succeed, what's the best advice you can give? Now, I guarantee you can get online and you can do a Google search. Advice, parental advice for children to succeed. And you'll find all manner of stuff. You'll find things that will talk about encouraging them, pushing them to, to achieve great things academically. You'll find things that will say encourage them to have a, a great work ethic. Encourage them to, to invest time in their family. And all of those are good things. I'm not saying those are bad things. But what's the best advice that you can give them? to help set them up to succeed. Look at David's advice, verse 3. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in His ways, His statutes, His commandments, His ordinances, His testimonies, according to all that is written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in all you do. Now, this is not one of those health, wealth, prosperity messages. 
that if you just follow after God, you'll have, your bank account will be overflowing and you'll have health all the days of your life. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. God does not promise that life will be easy. He does not promise that. That if we follow after him, we'll have more money and more health than we know what to do with. That's not a promise of Scripture. But he's talking about success. What really matters in the realm of success? And notice the first thing he said. He said, so that keep the charge of the Lord your God. Listen, your kids need to know, they need to be reminded that God is a personal God. He's not a way out there God at the far end of the universe and he just wound this clock up and lets it wind down. And he's, he's watching us on earth and saying, well, good luck with that, I hope you figure it out. That's not, that's not how God functions. He's a very personal God. Several years ago, Jeannie and I had the opportunity to go whitewater rafting. Now, I'm not an adventure kind of guy. I don't like that kind of high thrill sort of stuff. We go to the amusement park, and my job is to buy stuff and hold the bags. Jeannie's job, take the kids on the roller coasters. I'm not a high thrill kind of guy. I'm not an adventurous kind of guy. To this day, I have no idea how she talked me into whitewater rafting. But we went nonetheless. And I got to tell you, that trip would have been an utter disaster had we tried to navigate those waters on our own. But we had a guide with us. And he had been down this river dozens and dozens of times, and he knew these rapids backwards and frontwards. Listen, dads, you are that guide. Your children are going to encounter the turbulent waters of life. They're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're going down this river that you've been down. They're hitting these white water rapids that you have already gone down. And they need to know from somebody who's gone down these rapids before that in those moments, God is with them. He hasn't left. He hasn't abandoned them. He's personal. He's near. He's involved. They need to know that from you. And then he says to Solomon, Walk in his ways. Keep his statutes, his commands, his ordinances, his testimonies, everything that is written in the law. Listen, don't be that parent who says, I'm just going to let them decide when they get older what they want to do about God. Now on the surface, that sounds like it's wise, a wise parental stance to take, right? Right? I trust my kids. My kids are smart and they're intelligent and I trust their, their judgment. So I'm just going to let them decide. Listen, they're going to decide. Whether you say that or not, the day will come. They are going to decide. We just recognized a couple of high school graduates up here last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday. And they're at that point in time when, when now they're men. And they're going to make that decision on their own. That's never a question. Are they going to decide what role God has in their life? They're going to make that decision. Here's the question, though. How are you equipping them to make that decision? That's the question, Dad. How are you investing in them to make that decision? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers, notice how Paul starts that. Fathers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Dad, you take the lead here. You, take the, you stand at the forefront. You be the one to initiate this conversation. You take the lead because as, as you maybe, may have heard several times said over the course of your life, more is caught than is taught. I'm not contradicting Paul there when he says train them, teach them. Let me tell you what I mean by that. More is caught than is taught. Do you tell them how important church is? But then you don't go. Or you go reluctantly. It's like you've got to drag you out of the house. You tell them how important church is, but you're only there reluctantly. You tell them how important it is to read and learn the Bible, spend time in prayer, follow after God. You tell them how important those things are, but they have no place in your life. And here's the message you're sending to your children when, when that's the stance you take. 
That following after God, going to church, being in the Bible, praying, being obedient to Him, those things only matter when you're a child. When you're an adult, God has no place. The question, dads, how are you equipping them to make that decision? And then David goes on. And he says that you may succeed in all that you have and all that you do and wherever you turn. How have you defined success for your kids? If your kids are very young, you haven't had that, that conversation yet, but somewhere in your head, you've got a definition of success that one day you'll share with them. And if your kids are a little bit older, how have you defined success for them? Solomon's reign, if you read his story of his reign, he had all of the marks of worldly success. Fame, there's an encounter where the queen of Sheba comes. She hears about Solomon. Now, this is pre-internet days, pre-24-7 news cycle days. And best we can tell, the queen of Sheba was from Yemen, 1,300 miles from Jerusalem. Somehow she hears about Solomon. His fame is spread. He had fame, wealth, power, influence. By worldly standards, Solomon's reign was a colossal success. There was something rotten in it, something in the foundation of it that crumbled from God's perspective. How do you define success? All of those things that Solomon had in his reign, every one of them passed away. And the day that Solomon passed from this life into the next, none of those things mattered at all. Revelation chapter 4, there is this scene that John describes for us. This scene in heaven. And the 24 elders are there, he said, and they're seated on their thrones, and, and they're wearing crowns, and we can only assume those crowns they have are, are the crowns of the rewards that they have gotten for the things they've done in this life. Now, they're not strutting around heaven with these crowns on. Look at all the crowns I got. I've got 10. I notice you only have 8. They're not strutting around heaven. Check out, check out this, this fruit salad I'm wearing here. Here's what they're doing. Here's the encounter. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne. And they worship him who lives forever and ever. And look at what they do. They cast their crowns before the throne. Listen, the most important thing, the greatest measure of success what matters most is that in all things we bring glory to God there it is in all things we bring glory to God the psalmist said that all of creation sings praises to God all of creation glorifies God that includes you and me that's the reason we're here, the purpose, the why we were created in the first place. Was to join in with the rest of creation, bringing praise to the only one in the universe that deserves it. The measure of success, the greatest measure of success we can instill in our kids. It's not those things by the worldly standards. Wealth and, f and fame and power and influence. But that in all things to glorify God. Dads, learn from David. It's never too late. Focus on what's important. And then the last thing, create a godly legacy. Look there again at verse 4. So that. Now, whenever you see that in Scripture, that's, that's, that's a purpose. Here's what's happened before all these things. Here's going to be the result. So that the Lord may carry out His promise, which He spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons are careful of their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Now David's talking about his legacy, right? He's talking about what's going to happen after he's gone. Not only his legacy, but the legacy of the generations coming after him. One of the greatest legacies that you can leave your children is the legacy of salvation. To pass that on. 
to help them come to a saving relationship with Christ. That's the greatest legacy you can pass on to your kids. Of all those potential legacy builders you can talk about, of all of those potential legacy builders David could have talked about with Solomon, what does he focus on? His relationship with the Lord. That is the greatest legacy. Not academics or family or sports or work, as important as those things are, only one thing will follow us into eternity. And that is the decision we make concerning Jesus Christ in this world, the only thing that will matter. And notice in verse 4, he, he's not telling Solomon to be religious. Because what God is most interested in are hearts and souls that are faithfully following Him. That's what He wants from us. Not a, not a checkbox of, I did all the right things. I followed after all the religious activities. That's not what he's after. What he's after is hearts that follow him. Walk in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. That's what he's most interested in. 3 John chapter 1. Toward the end of the New Testament, there's these three little letters from the Apostle John. There's three letters of John, Jude, and then the book of the Revelation. And 3 John... Chapter 1, verse 4, God said this, I have no greater joy than this, to hear of my children walking in the truth. And that's what he said here. That's what David passes on to Solomon, to walk in the truth. Jesus said he is the truth. That's the greatest legacy. Listen, dads, don't leave your, your eternity or theirs don't leave it to this vague, I hope so. I hope I'll go to heaven. I'm not entirely certain, but I hope so one day. Don't leave it to that. If you're not certain of your salvation, get there. If you've not sat and had a conversation, if you're not certain whether your children have trusted in Christ, talk with them about getting there. If you've got questions about that, you need help with that. Come talk to me after the service. My wife's in the States. I got all day. Come talk to me after the service. We'll sit and talk about what it means to trust in Christ. David wraps up his dad advice like this. You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Now, of course, that was a specific promise to David. So he's not promising us that we'll always be kings or queens for all of eternity. That's not the promise. But what's the takeaway? What are, what are we to pull out of that? That God wants us to be faithful to him so we can experience his greatest blessings. He had some incredible blessings lined up for the line of David. If they would only follow after him, they would experience them to the fullest. That's what God wants from us. I mean, oftentimes people think of, you know, what God asks us to do to be involved in this and not involved in that is, is God limiting our, our fun in this world, limiting our choices in this world. God telling me to do this and not that, and I don't like that. But you know what God is telling us? Here's how you experience the greatest blessings from this thing I created called life. And he, we, he wants us to faithfully follow him so we can experience those. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore the Lord, that the Lord your God, He is God, He is faithful. He keeps His covenants, His faithfulness to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. God wants us to experience the greatest blessings from Him. And the way we do that is by following after what He has for us in life. Now, Dad, you might be sitting here this morning saying, my wife's better at that stuff. And so I'm going to let her do that. I'm going to let her take the lead because she's better at that stuff than me. But guys, it's not her job. It's ours. God expects us to step up and be the spiritual leaders. It's not her job. And this is one of the things our one-on-one -on -one discipleship is designed to do. Guys, if you would say, my wife is better at that stuff, 
I don't know how to have a, a quiet time. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how to get something out of the Bible when I read it. Sometimes they're just words that pass by on a page. I don't know how to have an effective prayer life. How am I going to talk to my kids about any of that stuff? And if that's you, if that's where you are this morning, that's what our one-on-one -on -one discipleship is designed to do. We'll pair you with a guy who's a step or two ahead of you in your relationship. By the way, we could do that for ladies too. We'll pair you with someone who's a step or two ahead of you in their walk with Christ. So you could talk about those things. How do you get something out of the Word of God when you read it? How do you have a decent prayer life? How can you pass that on to your kids? All the things you need to get better at that stuff. Because the only legacy worth passing on is a legacy of godliness. I'm going to ask our praise team to come on back up. And I mentioned earlier, society has done, well, really a good job of this. Gone to great lengths to minimize the role of dads, minimize the impact of dads in homes, minimize the impact of dads in societies. But dad, here's the thing. The impact that you have on your kids is much greater than you'll ever even know. There are ways you will impact their lives, some for better, some for worse, but you will impact their lives in ways they never can and never will express to you. Take that seriously. It's never too late to engage, dads. No matter what has happened before, engage now spiritually with your kids. Help them see what real, meaningful, genuine success in God's eyes looks like. And walk with them to build a godly legacy. Now, obviously, all of that starts with a relationship with Christ. You having a personal relationship with Christ. And I mentioned it earlier. If you don't know where you stand with the Lord, Respond during this last song. Respond after the service. Come talk to me. Come talk to one of our deacons after the service. We'd love to help you make that decision. Dads, moms, teens, kids. It all begins with a relationship with him. Dad, where do you need to start? How can we help you do that? Father, we thank you for the time in your word this morning. We thank you for the challenge the example of this man who you called a man after your heart. Didn't always get it right. But Lord, his heart was in tune with you. And Father, I pray that you'd help us as dads to learn from those moments that David did get it right with his son. Father, as we sing this last praise song, we continue to sing about your wonderful majesty, your glory in our lives. Father, I pray this is more than just words. And if there's one here this morning that's not settled, they don't know where they are in their relationship with you, would you continue to speak to them this morning? So they settle it before they walk out of this place today? Father, would you help this time to be a time of just worship and response to you? And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll stand as we sing our final song. So this song is, um, isn't new, but it's new to the church. Uh, it's called The Rebel uh, by a band called For All Seasons. Um, this is, in my opinion, a super, super underrated worship song. It's probably one of my favorites just because of um, just the way that it talks about the, you know, the person's relationship with God and, and how grateful they are just for everything the Lord has done for us. Um, so if you don't know the words, that's okay. Honestly, just listen to and, and reflect on um, what's being sung and how it, you know, relates to your life or, or maybe doesn't. I feel like it relates to all of our Christian walks um, in some way. So... How wonderful you are, how glorious and powerful is your unfailing love. I see your sacrifice, through selfless blood you broke the vice of death.
death to make me see I am the rebel I am the cause of all this trouble I am the nail that pierced your hands pierced your feet yet still you love me though I stood and mocked the lamb above me a wonderful mystery you've given me hope 